something missing. Pearls. <gasps> Drake Private Detectives? Private Detectives, what are you talking about? I'm currently on the set of the TV show Frankie Drake Mysteries, which takes us to the 1920s, where two of the main characters are lady detectives, something that was extraordinary for that period of time. On top of it all, they have two other ladies who are helping them in solving the crimes. And overall, we have real crimes, we have very female relationships, we have many emotional moments, and lots of fun. Hi, I'm Lauren Lee Smith from Frankie Drake Mysteries. Lauren Lee Smith is a Canadian actress born in Vancouver that has appeared in numerous hit TV productions such as The L Word, CSI Crime Scene Investigation, The Listener. In the past couple of years, she became Frankie in the brand new show about a team of female investigators. And she also appeared as Michael Shannon's wife in last year's Oscar winner The Shape of Water. How did you become Frankie and what do you like about her? Well, I, began, I became Frankie. Um, I actually, I did a show a couple years back with uh, Shaftesbury called The Listener. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a really great experience working with Christina Jennings and everyone at Shaftesbury. And uh, a few years had passed and uh, I got a call from Christina Jennings saying, I have this really amazing script. I think you should take a read and let me know what you think. And. I read the first five pages and put it down and called her back and said, this is incredible, let's make this happen. And it was one of these things that sort of all just came, the, the, the planets aligned because it all happened so quickly, uh, which is so rare for a show, a new show, you know, to be able to, to get off running that quickly. Um, but that's sort of how it all came about for me in a nutshell. I just, uh, I was instantly drawn to this strong, powerful female character, and uh, and I'd never seen anything quite like it. So I jumped at the opportunity to get to get to play Frankie. The atmosphere at the office of Frankie Drake makes you feel like a real detective. Doing a piece that takes place in the 1920s, there are so many aspects which which make it such a joy. Definitely the costumes, the hair, and the makeup. Um, as an actor, it helps in a way because it, it does part of the work for you in a sense that it, it grounds you and you immediately get transformed into your character that you're playing. Um, but it's also the sets, um, the, the time frame is such an interesting time for women in general. Um, so just getting to play a lot with that uh, and sort of this whole newfound freedom that women had in 1922. Um, I think, yeah, there's so many opportunities and so many places for the series to go. And uh, I think that's sort of what, what makes it so exciting. Frankie, you had nothing to do with that robbery. So what's the point in worrying? The cops suspect me. Me? Can you believe it? Would you steal them? Sorry, I had to ask. You have so many different themes that are like intervened in the story, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of feminism without sounding like you're lecturing people. Yeah. Um, so I think that really helps the story develop in terms of like you watching something very modern yeah. through the eyes of the 20s. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's exactly, you just sort of, you, you nailed it. It's, uh, it's very interesting and part of, I think, what makes this show so appealing to an audience is that we have the, um, the procedural aspect and we have the mystery aspect, but then you also throw in the fact that we are shooting Toronto for Toronto and we're shooting 19, you know, it's 1921, 1922, 1923. <laughs> Last year we had Hemingway, and yeah. this year we have Coco Chanel, and we have all of these um, these these real people who sort of are, are introduced throughout the series, and we're able to sort of thread in little um, tidbits of, of facts, and and uh, which which yeah, I think that's a really fun thing for people to get to watch. At least for me, it's fun I, to watch and get to so play. Well. Yeah. Usually when you put together so many women in one place, it doesn't always end up well. <laughs> <laughs> How is it your situation with it's, an entirely female It's so true, you're absolutely right. I did a show a few years ago and it was a, a mostly female cast and you know, everyone did not get along and especially you put together women who have very strong personalities and it's sort of like, you just never know. Um, it sounds like such a cliche when I say this and I've been saying it over and over and over again, but the cast that the creators and the producers have put together are 
such a joy. Like the first time that I met Chantal Riley, uh, it was for a chemistry read between the two of us, and literally she walked through the door, and like I just saw this like beam of light around her. She was just this like positive energy, beautiful human, and I was just like, oh my gosh, I just want to be around you. And then I met Rebecca, and I met Sharon, um, and it's just, it's such an interesting and different group of women, and we're all very different, and uh, we all bring our own, our own sort of whatever it is to each character, but we genuinely adore and love each other. I think the hardest part of knowing that we wrap season two tomorrow is the fact that we're not going to be getting to spend days and days and hours on end with each other because you really do form such a bond and sisterhood and uh, and we have. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't want an intricate, beautiful thing destroyed. We can do nothing. I'm sorry. Don't do this, Alasa. What is she saying? Don't do this. Oh God, it's not even human. Your character on Shape of Water mm -hmm. um, was also awesome. I really enjoyed oh, watching the scenes. With how how was it working with Michael Shannon with Guillermo del Toro? It was crazy. It was such a, a surreal time In of the my best life. Movie of last year. I know. Isn't that <laughs> nuts? I'm like I keep pinching myself just the fact that forever I can say I was a very small part, but I was in a movie that won the Academy Award. Is pretty cool. Um, yeah, that, that was also such a, um, it came about in such an interesting way. I had, um, I had met Guillermo a few years prior for another job uh, that scheduling conflicts came up and I wasn't able to do it. Uh, I was in Montreal shooting at the time. I had a four-month-old daughter with me and I got a call saying, Guillermo del Toro is shooting uh, his new film in Toronto and he's asked if you will come and play Michael Shannon's wife for a few days. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> of course. How do I make this happen? So my husband and I and my daughter uh, drove through the night to come to Toronto and uh, I left one set and immediately came to, to set on uh, The Shape of Water and I got to shoot sh shoot two days with, with Michael Shannon and uh, it was a trip. It was amazing. Michael Shannon is probably one of the most intense actors I've ever worked with. Um, and Guillermo is probably the like the biggest, sweetest, lovable teddy bear of a director I've ever worked with. Um, it was incredible. It was really cool because you kind of knew I was only there for, I think, yeah, I was there for two days and it was very early on in the shooting, but you could just sort of get the sense that everyone was so proud to be there and everyone kind of knew that they were involved in something really, really special. Um, so that was a really, it was a really cool thing to be part of. It's amazing. I've met Guillermo, I've interviewed him for five minutes. And okay. He was one of the best interviews. Isn't he just I like, know. you just want to hang out with him. Yeah. Like he is the sweetest, kindest man I, I think know. I've ever encountered in this business. <laughs> it yeah. Is. And speaking of that business, how did you enter this business and why did you want to be an actor? <laughs> um, I wanted to become an actor because when I was seven years old, I watched uh, a film called Labyrinth mm. with Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie and a lot of Muppets. <laughs> and, uh, I just remember as a kid watching this film and like being transfixed by this world that was being created for me like on the, the television screen and I had no idea what this weird world was but I knew that I wanted to be in it so I remember saying to my mom I want to do this she's like you want to be in Jim Henson's Muppet world and I was like yes that's exactly what I want to do um, so that was sort of it then I started pestering my parents from from a really young age no one in my family really comes from any kind of acting background or knew about the film industry, but uh, I started taking classes and started doing a lot of youth theater. Um, my family traveled around a lot when I was growing up, so it was pretty difficult to sort of stay consistent with one thing, but then when I turned uh, 17, we were living in Los Angeles, and I kind of did it backwards. We were living in Los Angeles, and I came back to Canada, and I was like, okay, I'm giving this acting thing a real, a real shot, and, um, and I got pretty lucky. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then again, I'm, I'm guessing that every little girl at some point wants to be a private investigator. And I mean, here you are. And here I am. <laughs> you know, the things that I get to pretend to do are pretty amazing in this career. I think that's part of what I love so much about it. I don't have to be very good at anything, but I can be sort of good at many things. <laughs> <laughs> Would you recommend it to your daughter? Acting? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> When she is like 18, we can start talking about it, but uh, no, that's hard for me to say. I, you know, it's a tough industry and I just, what I always say to young, um, to young actors or young, younger people who want to get into the business, um, my piece of advice, which is a little bit harsh, but to me it's, it's a bit of the truth, is if, if there's anything else you love or if there's anything else that you're passionate about, follow that. Um, because you have to want this so much and you have to want this more than anything else because the downside is really tough. The rejection is really hard and, um, and the never knowing when your next job is going to be, it's, it's definitely not for everyone. Um, and I think that's a hard thing for a lot of young people to really grasp. But I'm like, if there's anything that you love and are passionate about, explore that. You can always come back to, to that. How do you protect yourself from that, from the, from the downsides of this business over the years? Like, what do you do to recharge and relax? You know, it used to, I think, I think just aging, in a sense, has, you know, and maturing uh, has made it a little bit easier. But also just sort of that and also a certain amount of confidence. You have to be able to sort of sit back and go, okay, if this one wasn't meant for me, then uh, then something else will be. Um, but yeah, I mean, growing up in, in my early 20s, it was not easy. And I can tell you many times of, you know, flying to LA to test against so and so and being this close and not getting it and then being in the hotel floor crying and thinking my life was over and it was all very dramatic um, which you know now makes me laugh but it was not thank you very much <laughs> of course <laughs>